Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So it is time, I think this is my first of the year, but it is time to do my first buddy read with my friend Black Acre Doe of 2023. We have several prepped, um, we have several planned out for this year and as y'all know, he's my favorite person to do buddy reads with. So I am so excited to do our shared reviews on Philip Fricasse's Gothic. Um, if you guys do not know who Black Acre Doe is, he is an awesome um, guitar player as well as booktuber here on YouTube. We'll have his uh, info all linked down below. Um, he does uh, guitar tutorials on crazy like guitar riffs, primarily Slipknot and kind of like the metal world, but he is absolutely awesome. We have very similar tastes in books. Um, so it's really, really fun for us to collaborate on these buddy reads where we can really share each other's opinions. And this one's interesting because uh, we have different ratings on this book and different opinions on this book. Um, and I'm not going to put any words into his mouth. I want you guys to go and hear his different perspective on this. But this was a really interesting one um, because I feel like we both felt very similar towards this novel at the first half and then had very diverging um, takes on the second half of this novel. So definitely go and check out his channel and see all of his amazing thoughts because his are all very, very valid and very strong points. Um, and just definitely come from a different perspective and a different um, concept of what somebody is looking for in a novel. And I know that we both had similar issues with similar um, kind of jarring events in this book. However, our takeaways from how those issues were resolved by the author through his storytelling are definitely very different. Anyway, let's talk about Philip Fricasse and Gothic. So I believe this is the third novel that Fricasse has done um, that's being released on like a wider market. So he released earlier this year A Child Alone with Strangers, which I absolutely loved. I have a whole review on that on my channel. Um, prior to that, he released in a limited run um, The Boys in the Valley, which is coming out through Tor um, in July. I want to say I'm very excited about that because I've heard amazing things. And then this was just released um, about a month ago through Cemetery Dance Publications, maybe a month and a half ago. Um, and this is it. Now, one of the things I know that Black Acre <laughs> talked about was how kind of like cheesy this cover was. Um, I actually really dig it because Philip Fricasse kind of talks about um, why certain books look certain ways later on in the novel. And he does kind of explain what went into the creation of this book cover. I don't mind it. I think it really nails what this book is about. Um, I find the, the like kind of evil dead, uh, like 1980s ghoul on the back a little cheesy, but I don't mind the front cover as much. Anyway, let me read the back of the book for y'all. So on his 59th birthday, Tyson Parks, a famous but struggling horror writer, receives an antique desk from his girlfriend in the hopes it will rekindle his creative juices, perhaps inspire him to write another best-selling novel and prove his best years aren't behind him. A continent in a way, a mysterious woman investigates the whereabouts of an artifact her family has hunted for centuries. With the help of a New York City detective, she finally finds what she's been looking for. It's in the home of Tyson Parks. Meanwhile, as Tyson uses the desk, he begins acting strange, violent. His writing more disturbing than anything he's done before. But publishers are paying top dollar, convinced his new work will be a hit, and Tyson will do whatever it takes to protect his newfound success even if it means the destruction of the ones he loves, even if it means his own sanity. So this book is pretty much told through two different lenses. Um, we have the lens of our main character, Tyson Parks, and his family and how the desk affects them. And then we have Diana and her family's perspective on the desk. Um, I will say that I found all of the storylines for the first half of the novel focused on Tyson to be the strongest part of the book. The, the entire critique on the struggling author trying to get a new work published and being true to himself and not just giving um, the publishing company what they think that the public wants, I thought was really, really well done. I really liked the initial form and characterizations that we got from Tyson, as well as his daughter Violet and his girlfriend Sarah. I thought their whole family dynamic was really cool and very believable. Um, and for the most part, it was very happy. And because it's very happy, we know it can't be very happy in the end because this is a horror novel. Um, but I really liked it. I really thought the whole progression of how Tyson comes um, in contact with the desk was very, very well done. It was great storytelling. Um, 
Sarah's whole inner monologue throughout the entirety of the novel for the most part was very very well done. Um, and Philip Fricasse did that in A Child Alone at Strangers too where you get really good realistic representations of not necessarily main characters but strong minor characters, um, internal monologues and how they feel especially in Child Alone with Strangers like Henry's um, uh, aunt and uncle and the detective like you get a lot of really good character development with Philip Fricasse and that was the exact same in this novel for the family dynamic where that kind of fades away is definitely with Diane or Diana and the detective and her entire backstory it felt very very long it felt very complicated I don't necessarily think it needed to be as detailed or as long as it was um, and to be honest, it was very confusing. And something that both me and Black Acre noticed is that, like, his timeline was a little skewed. I don't know if it was an editing error, but it just sounded like characters who he said uh, were alive during this time period seemed to be alive at other time periods. Um, and I don't know if they were just characters with the same name, again, like Ancient Family Lines, um, or if it was just an editing error, but it made it very confusing. And the entire dynamic, like, it either needed to be way more developed or really toned down because it was like just enough information to be confusing um, and not enough information to be engaging. So I found that to be a little tricky. Um, but other than that, the whole build up to this climax of this evil desk taking over this family, I thought was extremely well done. This is um, takes place in Manhattan. You could just see a lot of the locations in real life. Again, I live in New York. There's an amazing scene where um, Tyson and his friend are having dinner at Keen's Steakhouse, um, which is a very, very famous restaurant here in New York, but I could just see it through um, Fricasse's writing. It's a restaurant my fiance and I have been to. Like, I could just, I was in Keen's Steakhouse when I was reading that chapter, and I thought it was really, really awesome and well done, and I loved the overall character development of the unraveling of Tyson Parks as he kind of Jack Torrance's into madness. Um, because he was so rooted as such a like kind of strong stable family man at the beginning even though he was a struggling author who had you know had success but those days were behind him um so it just felt very very real but however it's once he kind of <laughs> fully jack torrance says um that the book sort of started to lose me um and i will say that there was an extremely gratuitous um scene of violence and abuse towards a woman and it was graphic and it made me very uncomfortable and I don't think it was needed um and Fricasse does kind of touch upon that later on in the book like he kind of justifies why it was there I don't necessarily think that scene needed to be in the story and the number one reason I don't is because the woman who was the victim of this absolute horrible act and again this is just like a trigger warning it's it's not a fun scene to read um literally has a moment where she's just like I guess that happens I have to accept it and it's like no we take a very very strong character put her through something super traumatic and her response is to just immediately go back to her abuser and she justifies it and the justification I just thought was so wrong and you could just tell that this novel was written by a man um, and it made me feel so gross reading it because it was so horrible and way to take a very, very strong, independent female lead and just knock her down. And I don't believe that that character would have done that at all based on everything that we had read about her previously. So that I thought was really, really jarring. And that was definitely the turning point of this novel for both me and Black Acre. Um, and then it just kind of gets very, very depraved. The second half was definitely nowhere near as strong as the first half. It kind of goes off the rails, like both storylines start to intertwine in the second half of the novel um, and just had a lot of unnecessary filler. Um, I felt the entire storyline with the detective could have pretty much been truncated. Um, I felt a lot of the story with Violet also could have been very, very truncated. I don't think any of the final act with the detective or Violet was necessary. I think um, a lot had already been shown, so they didn't need to keep continuing it. And I think by doing that, it took away from the overall 
point that the novel was trying to make by just adding this kind of side story that wasn't important um, to the overall narrative. And it, it just felt very, like, it just felt added on last minute to, like, lengthen the novel. And I think it would have been more interesting to kind of focus on um, what the detective is bringing up to Tyson. Um, there's this moment where we understand exactly kind of what's going on and what the purpose of the desk is. And at the same time, it's very much a elongated metaphor for the career of the horror author. And it talks very much in depth about how there is this extreme side of horror and there is a consumer's market for horror um, in that kind of nature and how back in the 70s, 80s, even early 90s, this kind of extreme horror and this degradation of women and this making women like kind of objectified was socially acceptable and it's not anymore um, and yet it becomes a thing where artists or authors who were big in the 70s, 80s, and 90s are having a difficult time maintaining their style and their tone and being successful in today's consumer market. And I think that is the entire point of this novel um, and why Fracasse feels the need to write about women in certain ways at certain points um, to kind of parallel what is happening. The book becomes very meta and very self-aware, um, is very much in this mindset of how do you stay relevant after the height of your career if you're a horror author? What do you have to do? What territories do you branch into? How do you take on social media and cancel culture? It becomes very, very, very self-aware of today's world. Um, and just like Tyson Parks is consistently comparing himself to Stephen King, who has... <laughs> Sorry, there's sirens. Um, who has, Stephen King, who has consistently been able to put out bestseller after bestseller after bestseller. And even though we might say that some of his newer work isn't as strong as some of his older work, you still get things like 11, 22, 63, um, and like The Institute, and just a lot of, and Dr. Sleep, and newer books from King that are still bestsellers, that are still being made into film and TV shows. Like, how do you maintain that? And Fracasse, who it's ironically a very, very new author to the game, really captures that concept, which just makes me think that Fracasse has read a lot of the greats who, if they had released some of their great books from the 70s and 80s today, probably wouldn't be considered um, marketable in today's world. And I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was a really cool way to just tap into the idea of the writer's psyche and the the market that we have. It reminded me a lot of a much darker version of Kill Creek. Um, I love Kill Creek. I've talked about it several times on this channel. If you have not read it and you're really into like kind of meta stories critiquing the horror literature community, it's an amazing read um, just from that perspective. And this book definitely touches on that. I just wish it was a little cleaner. I wish it was a little kinder. Um, and definitely maybe had one or two more edits run through to pull away some of the excess in this novel. Um, but I did find the desk really, really scary. The desk was really interesting. It was very supernatural. I like the occultism behind it. I liked the lore behind it. Um, and the description of this desk. Oh my god, it made me want to own and also be terrified of this desk. It sounded amazing. Um, so I do think that there were some shining moments in this novel, but I don't think it was as great as I was hoping it was going to be. It's a very, very low four star rating for me because I do appreciate what Fracasse was trying to say. And while I don't necessarily agree with some of the methods he used to get those points across, I did really appreciate the meta ideas in here. Whereas something like A Child Alone with Strangers was an almost five star read for me. Like it was so close. It had a few moments of like animal cruelty and like some questionable scenes that dropped it down. But I really, really loved that book, and I thought this book was very intelligent, very well done, um, creepy, really, really creepy. Um, there's kind of this almost all-encompassing consequence that comes from the desk towards the end of the novel that was really dread-inducing and just a little cheesy at the same time, but still, like, the point was there and I appreciated it. So low, low four stars will definitely be reading Boys in the Valley and hopefully kind of solidify where I feel about Fricasse's writing once I get there. Um, definitely an author I still want to see more from. 
Um, but definitely impressed uh, with what he has written so far. I think it's very unique. I don't think... Um, I think he's touching on things that we aren't seeing too much of in the current literary community. He's definitely taking um, very overdone concepts and then giving a breath of fresh air to them and a new perspective, and I really, really appreciate that. And Boys in the Valley just sounds absolutely epic, so I cannot wait to get to that because I also feel like it's going to be very different than I'm expecting it because that's kind of been what both gothic and a child alone with strangers have been for me just very very different from what i expected going into them but like definitely very intrigued after i've read them so yes low four stars um worth a read i do think a child alone with strangers is better even though it's like 250 pages longer um anyways that is all that i have for you guys today as always if you enjoyed these videos please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below um please please make sure to check out black acres channel and video give him a like and subscribe as well um and i will catch you all in the next one Mwah.